patient after forceful vomiting or repeated vomiting developed severe chest pain along with fever what will what should be the diagnosis diagnosis should be possible spontaneous esophageal perforation or borave syndrome okay borave syndrome is the spontaneous esophageal perforation which is generally a full thickness perforation of the esophagus and leads to the gastric acid or the gastric secretions going into the left chest okay and leading to sepsis mediastinitis fever okay now we will discuss the topic esophageal perforation in detail most common cause of esophageal perforation is iatrogenic or endoscopic iatrogenic okay iatrogenic matlab it is caused by some intervention and what is the most common type of intervention which leads to esophageal perforation it is endoscopy okay now what is the most common site of esophageal perforation so i have told you what is the narrowest part of the git it is cricopharynx okay so the most common site is cricopharynx specifically the posterior wall of cricopharynx okay so the most common site is posterior wall of cricopharynx what we call what is borave syndrome borave syndrome it is spontaneous esophageal perforation this is a full thickness perforation and it occurs due to repeated vomiting forceful vomiting which is a which leads to spontaneous esophageal perforation okay what is the most common site of perforation in borave syndrome it is lower one third of the esophagus generally in the left posterior lateral direction lower one third esophagus left posterior lateral direction now what is the investigation of choice for a case of suspected esophageal perforation what is the investigation of choice okay so the investigation of choice is water soluble contrast esophagogram water soluble contrast esophagogram why water soluble because barium generally need, leads to this uh, mediastinitis and uh, this pneumonitis so in these cases we prefer water soluble contrast generally the best water soluble soluble contrast which we commonly use nowadays is gastrographin so gastrographin is preferred hypec can also be used we, what we generally say is if there is a suspected suppose how we are encountering these patients in our routine clinical practice is suppose there is some foreign body or some impacted denture inside the esophagus and the endoscopist tried to remove that denture and the endoscopist successfully removed that denture okay but post operate but post the procedure the patient developed severe chest pain and fever and we got the x ray done 
in x-ray we got hydropneumothorax so there is presence of some air also and there is some collection in the chest also on clinical examination there is some crepitus along the neck or along the chest so there is some air leak from somewhere and the most probable site is the place from where the denture has impacted because the denture is having sharp points also so there is possibility that there is some esophageal rupture this is what we personally feel regarding the case so we'll go ahead with the gastrographin study or with the gastrographin ct okay and we document the leak there uh, along with the hydropneumothorax and other findings and then we'll straight away go for surgery because it is a surgical emergency and the golden period for surgery is within 24 hours preferably before 12 hours as early as possible is the best time so whenever there is some endoscopic procedure which is being done some dilatation of the stricture or some foreign body removal we should observe the patient initially for at least few hours to see whether the patient is developing any symptoms and in case if any there is any symptoms we should straight away go for the investigations and surgery okay so the investigation choice is water soluble contrast esophagogram preferably a gastrographin in case if we are getting a chest x-ray done we will find a hydropneumothorax and <coughs> along with that we will go for surgery in case if we'll identify that there is any esophageal perforation with leak the golden period is within 24 hours what we will do in the surgery we will do perforation repair ICD insertion and a feeding genosomy mortality is 20 percent in these cases mortality okay in case if the diagnosis is missed and we identify the diagnosis after 24 hours in this case the wall is very friable it is not going to hold any sutures the best thing is to do esophagostomy to take the esophagus outside of the body surface to control the damage and to control the further damage okay so we will go for esophagostomy in these cases along with same the icd insertion and fj will not attempt for primary closure in these cases or the perforation repair in these cases the mortality is more than 50 percent in these cases okay now there is a triad which is seen macular triad in patients of esophageal perforation this macular triad is presence of thoracic pain vomiting and subcutaneous emphysema this is presence of thoracic pain presence of vomiting and cervical subcutaneous emphysema okay these are the components of macular stride 